So I've been sharing some of my experiences growing up in the charismatic church and, you know, dealing with these Mike Bickle type NAR, you know, charismatic preachers. Uh, I've gone over a lot already on past videos. And if you've missed any, you can go back on the channel and check those out. Initially, when I first started talking about some of my experiences, they got uh, some pretty good reaction. People were interested in hearing more. Uh, unfortunately, as of late, that same response and interaction just hasn't been there. Some of the more recent stories that I've shared have gotten actually little to no reaction at all. So I debated on whether or not I even wanted to continue with sharing in these stories again, just because they're just not getting any reaction really at all or, or any views from people. So, you know, I just didn't want to waste my time with it, but I thought about it again and I said, you know, if it just reaches one person, you know, maybe then I think it's worth it because we need to expose these people for who they are because they hurt a lot of people with their words and their false promises. I know they did that to me. And so again, if I can just help one person in waking up to who these wolves are, then I, I think that's worth it. Even if, you know, again, the videos don't get much attention or reaction from people. So we're actually going to talk here about the experience I had with Billy Burke, healing evangelist. He does these healing crusades all over the place. He's uh, pretty close with Kenneth Copeland, guys like that. So that probably shows you right there the type of guy he is. So we're going to get into this and I'm going to talk about uh, what I experienced going to one of his so-called healing services, which by the way, was the very last one that I ever attended. We'll talk about it. Welcome everybody to Not By Sight News. Yes, a blind Christian guy here reporting to you, reminding you as always, we walk by faith, not by sight. For someone like me, yeah, that's kind of my only option. Speaking of that, if you're interested, you want to hear my story about how I went blind and how I operate my entire ministry without being able to see, I made a video that explains it all. I include a link to that in the description section of all my videos, so that's there for you. Also, if God puts it on your heart to do so, consider making a generous donation to support my ministry. A few different ways you could do that. One, hit the super thanks button on the YT video here to make a contribution that way, or join my Patreon for as little as five bucks a month, patreon.com slash notbysightnews. Link in the description. When you join the Patreon, you get all the videos before they ever hit the main YT platform. I also include some exclusive links to these topics that we discuss, some that I have to put on Patreon for obvious reasons, but while you're there, you can comment censorship free in all videos and even send me DMs. So check it out again, patreon.com slash notbysightnews. Big thank you to everybody already contributing and those thinking of doing so, thank you as well. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. So, you know, I talk about all the time. If you guys have never heard my story about going blind, I encourage you to go listen to it because I, I pull from a lot of that when I share these stories. So, because I've skipped around, I've discussed different years, different times in my life of what I've been through. So again, I really recommend you watch that video. So this happened in July of 2018. And the significance with this is that this was the very last quote unquote healing service or healing crusade that I ever went to. And this is coming from somebody who grew up in the charismatic church and attended these healing services from a very, very young age. And when I went, really went fully blind, um, even before when I was just partially blind, I was seeking these healing services even more because I'm like, well, you got to trust these charismatic preachers. I mean, you know, they're healing ministers. So obviously you're going to get healed if you go to one of their services. And little did I find out that was nothing more than a lie. Now, to give you a little context into this, and again, I'm not going to share the whole story about being blind, going and how I operate my ministry. There's, there's a whole other video out you can watch on that. But I started going uh, partially blind in December of 2010 when I was diagnosed with glaucoma. Uh, in a matter of three weeks, I lost all the vision in my left eye and all but about 20 to 25% of my right eye. Now, I maintained partial vision in that right eye until about January of 2018, which is when I rapidly started losing the remainder of the vision that I had in my right eye. And by May of 2018, I had gone completely blind at that point. So you got to understand the timeline now. So that was in May of 2018. I go completely blind. And in July of 2018, two months later, I'm at this Billy Burke healing service, which took place in Rancho Cucamonga, California. Now, this was kind of something that I found out about last minute. I think I found out about it in June, 
and I was asked if I would want it, if I, if I would want to go. And and I, and I said yes. And I was in again, I was in a completely different place then. You got to understand, you know, 2 months being fully blind, I was desperate, okay? And again, I'd been to healing services prior to even this years and years ago, and I've shared those stories. So again, you can go back on the channel and you can check those out. My experiences at healing services were never very good. Uh, and again, I won't say it all, but you can go back and watch those videos. So I said, yeah, let's let's do this. Let's go. Uh, because I, I wanted to be able to see again. And so the healing service was actually held at this, it was actually at this, this Filipino church uh, in Rancho Cucamonga, California. They got Billy Burke there. And, you know, some of you heard of Billy Burke before. Again, he's affiliated with Kenneth Copeland. And he goes and does all these healing services. So there was like a two or three night uh, service in uh, in Rancho Cucamonga, California. So got hotel, booked all that, and headed out there. And, you know, I go into the service. And, again, typical charismatic type. You know, Billy Burke is just like a lot of these other, you know, charismatic healing preachers out there. A lot of the same you know, type of mannerisms and over the top and the yelly type stuff and all that. So, you know, he starts, starts praying for people. And I go up there and, you know, he asks, you know, what is wrong? And I told him that I had just recently gone blind and that I had been vision impaired for nearly eight years prior to that already. And so he, so he prays for me. And I, I want to point out that there was also another girl that was there at the service that was also blind. And he prayed for her first, okay? Now, when he prayed for her, she was apparently totally blind too. Prayed for her within a matter of minutes, the girl can see again, okay? So people are all excited. And again, this is a Filipino church, but there's people that came from all over parts of California and even other states to be a part of this. Because again, they chase the man. Uh, they don't chase God. So apparently this girl can see again, right? Everybody's, you know, praising God and they're, they're yelling and they're throwing their hands up and they're running around the church and doing cartwheels and backflips and whatnot and all that stuff you do with the charismatic type healing revivals, right? Okay, so he goes up there and prays for me. Nothing happens, okay? He prays again. Nothing happens. He's asking me, can you see? He said, close, close your eye, this eye, this eye, whatever. Do it. Nothing happens, Okay. And he, and, he, and he just says to me, well, you're going to get it. You're, it's it's, it's going to come, right? And you got to understand, there was a line to get up there, the amount of people. Like, I don't remember. I don't think it was a very big church. But, like, the the line to get up there was, was absolutely crazy. And something else that I want to point out, too, this is also worth mentioning. Um, and I'll tell you about night two when I came back, which, looking back on it now, I wish I didn't. There was a, there was a, a, a kid. I don't know how old he was, but he had cerebral palsy or something and as billy burke was preaching i mean you, you know how they how they are you know it's like they can't really talk and they can you know they can get kind of noisy okay um and he got upset that being billy burke and you know he was you know he was he was he was trying to like tell the kid to be silent in the name of jesus and everything else like that and because he was distracting the service not that he was trying to it's just that's the disability that he has and you know some of that behavioral stuff and so they ended up taking him out of the service and i was shocked and i didn't know about it at first because i had have other people that i was with tell me like because i was because i can't see so i don't know what's going on but i'm like wait a minute this is a healing service right i mean these people are allegedly getting healed of things or getting up out of wheelchairs i'll talk more about that in a second and yet you can't heal this kid right? He's, why, why is he not healed? Why is this, why is this condition not gone from him? But he's, you're telling him to get out of the service because he's a distraction. Interesting. Uh, yeah. And I, I didn't even get that revelation until like really a few years later, to be honest with you. So they end up taking the kid out. I mean, he never got, to my knowledge, he didn't get healed. Nothing. They, so he's a distraction. He's like, oh, be quiet in the name of Jesus and get him out of here. I'm like, okay, that's nice. So I come back day two. So there we are at night, we're back in the meeting and I, I go up for prayer again, right? All right? First you don't succeed, dust yourself off, try again. So I go back night two, go back in that prayer line again and 
I get up there and there he is again. And he, he kind of remember, he goes, he goes, Hey, so did anything happen last night? Cause he, he was telling me the night before he's like, well, you know, God's going to do it. He's said, just watch for tonight. Watch you know, that site's going to start to come back slowly. Nothing happened. And he's like, did anything happen? I said, no. And he goes, you got a little frustrated last night, didn't you? And I'm like, yeah. Like I said, yes. Like, what do you think? And he's like, he mentions the girl that got healed from the night before, right? Supposedly. And he says, if, if he could do it for her, then why not you? And I said, that's what I'm talking about. Let's do this then. Why is it not happening for me? So he prays for me again, right? And again, nothing happens. And he does it. He prays again. And again, nothing happens. He keeps asking me anything, anything. Close this eye, close that eye, nothing. And he just said, well, just keep the faith and keep on believing. And I left. And that was the last time I ever attended a quote unquote healing service. I will never go again. Now that was about six years ago. Now at this point, almost six years ago. And I'll tell you this, I never wanted to believe it. I had people tell me, and I actually had argued back with them that many of the people that show up at these healing services are fake. These are not people that actually have ailments. They're in wheelchairs, but they don't need to be, but they bring them to the services because they need people to see God quote unquote work. Because imagine this, if you're having a service and you're calling it a healing service, right? Whatever you want to bill it, healing crusade, it doesn't matter. And you're praying for people and nothing happens and no one gets healed. You're done in ministry. You're going to be labeled a fraud, right? You're going to be labeled a false prophet and everything else like that. What are you going to do? Are you going to tell every single person what they told me? Oh, well, you know, keep the faith. It's going to come. You know, don't stop believing in what the Lord can do. No, no one's going to come because... Then all of a sudden, the, the label that you put on your service is null and void. Healing service. How many people got healed? Well, none, but they will. No, they're looking for it to happen right then and there. They're looking for manifestations to take place in that service. That's why they call it a healing service. And so I woke up to it and I realized what these you know NAR charismatics are doing. They're bringing in actors. They're posing, and it's sad to say that, but that's what's happening. They're in wheelchairs. They don't need to be. They're talking about how they're, the, the people that are blind. And I'll go back to the girl that was, you know, prayed for for healing. I don't believe she was actually blind. I believe that they had her up there for that reason to, you know, encourage others who are maybe blind to go up and get prayer. And then what? You don't get your healing, but then they encourage you to go out and buy Billy Burke's books or buy his DVDs or whatever it is, right? Because, well, it'll happen for you. But that's just it. They have to show you that some people are getting healed. So it does work. And then they just drop the faith message on you and make it seem like it's your fault, yet you're not healed because, well, you're holding on to things. You're holding on to bitterness or unforgiveness or anger or something is is holding back the Lord from healing you. The Lord don't need anything from me. He could heal me in two seconds if that's what he wants to do, right? It's not like he's, you know, he's got his favorites, nothing like that. He's not a respecter of persons. You know, he said to me, why not you? I don't know, Billy, you tell me, why not me? It's because that girl was never really blind. And again, these are actors. You got to bring them in so people can buy into it. Oh, cool. They got healed. It's so easy. It is so easy to trick and fool people. And they play with people's, you know, emotions. They play with their faith like that. And I have had to learn the hard way of what that feels like when they build up your hope. Again, I was someone I chased every single, mer- I mean, when I started losing my vision again, and I, and I may talk about this in a separate video, but when I started losing the remainder of my vision in January of 2018, I was immediately looking for healing services. I wasn't going to God and praying for him to heal me. I was going to find a man to do it. And it's burned me for the better part of 14 years now trying to do this. And these men get away with it. They continue. They're always going to get people to come because it's so easy to manipulate through that word healing to get people to come down. I, I, I've heard from some of you as well that you've experienced some of the same things. It's truly sad. And again, I will never go to one of these healing services again. My last one again was the Billy Burke deal in July 
of 2018 and uh yeah never never again i'm not against church i i i promote people or i tell people to you know do home church if you can get out of the big mega churches i'm not a deconstructing christian i love jesus with all my heart i'm a believer i never lost my faith in him if anything dealing with these men has showed me that i need to rely on him more and less on man. There's some though that leave the faith completely. That's not what I've done. That's not what I'll ever do. I'm just trying to wake people up to who these men really are because I don't want you to have to go through what I've had to go through and and feel that disappointment of being let down by man when they promise you something that they can't deliver on because they're still getting away with it today. It's truly sad. So again, I welcome your thoughts on this in the comment section. If you'd like to add anything, maybe share one of your own experiences. And what I want to also do right now is end this video on hope. It's part of my ministry outreach. What this is is an altar call. I've been doing this on my videos since 2016. No matter what it is that I'm discussing here in the church and exposing the false prophets, we always want to lead people to Jesus because, well, we're in those days. Time is running out. The Lord is coming soon. So for anybody watching now, if you're somebody who has not yet received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you would like to do so, I want to lead you in a prayer to do that right now. This is a prayer you could do in your own words, but I will give you the steps you need to bring it before the Lord today. First thing you want to do right off the top, acknowledge that you are a sinner. That is something that we all are. The good news is that God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world. As he died and rose again for you and me, he paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin. That means to turn from sin, not just to say you're sorry and then jump back to your old ways, but to actually turn from sin, which are those lifestyles, patterns, habits, behaviors, things in your life that go against the word of God. If you humbly go before the Lord, though, and ask him to forgive you, he'll wipe your sin away. And the Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision that you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. And I pray you make that decision today. Again, I appreciate you all watching and I welcome your thoughts down below. Don't forget the links to donate to the ministry are there as well. Join the Patreon for as little as five bucks a month, patreon.com slash notbysightnews or hit the super thanks button on the YT video here to make a contribution that way. It's all a great blessing. Thank you all again so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk. What do you say?